In this video, we'll look at the Reliability Assessment function. Study Case 4 of the MV Distribution Network example should be active. Reliability Assessment is used to assess a network's response to possible faults and quantify in terms of standard indices the reliability of the customer supply. In the analysis, faults are considered stochastically, meaning that individual fault events cannot be predicted, but the probabilities of events can be modelled using failure rate data. This is configured on the reliability page of the element. When a fault occurs, three things should happen. Firstly, the protection operates and opens circuit breakers to clear the fault. Then, the faulted equipment must be isolated from the rest of the network. Finally, re-switching can take place to restore as much demand as possible whilst leaving the faulted element isolated. With that in mind, let's look at the reliability assessment command. On the Basic Options page, we define which contingencies, that is, faults, should be considered. In this case, we want faults on terminals, lines and transformers in the whole system to be considered, but there's also an option to provide a customised selection instead. On the Protection page, we must determine how the fault will be cleared. We could allow faults to be cleared by any circuit breakers, but it's more realistic to use only switches with protection devices. In Power Factory, this can mean switches with explicitly modelled protection. But it will also include other switches that have been configured on the reliability page to be considered as a switch with protection device. It's possible to run the reliability assessment without considering power restoration. But if the option is selected, Power Factory will use its optimal power restoration function to determine the sequence of events for restoring supply. On this page, costs associated with the loss of supply can be configured. Here, we'll use a global cost dependent on the outage duration. The Constraints page enables the user to ensure that system constraints are not breached during the restoration process. This might entail some load shedding. We'll now execute the command. With the calculation complete, let's first look at the overview diagram. It's coloured to indicate the yearly interruption time, which is calculated for loads. The areas coloured red are likely to experience over one hour per year of interruption to supply, and it can be seen how the extremities of the network are weakest in this respect. We can use this icon to run reports. Let's select the System Summary report and a report detailing the contributions according to component groups. Here we can see standard indices used to indicate the reliability of each grid, together with summary figures for the entire network. Commonly used indices include SIFI, which is the System Average Interruption Frequency Index, SIDI, which is the System Average Interruption Duration Index, and ENS, or Energy Not Supplied. This other report provides a breakdown of contributions to the indices according to the type of network component. We'd now like to know which particular faults are contributing the most to interruptions of supply. This icon can be used to create tabular reports of contributions. 
Let's look at these three indices. The table can be sorted as required. For example, we can sort to see which faults contribute most to SIFI. However, these results apply to the system as a whole. We might instead want to focus on one load in particular. Let's look at the calculation results for the load objects and see which loads suffer the most interruption to supply in terms of time. We'll use the result variable load point interruption time as our criterion. Load LDMV590 is at the top of the list. Let's see where this is in the network. We can now calculate the contributions to the indices for just this load. To do this, we'll first create a set that contains this load object. Now, this set can be used as a filter so that we can generate a report of contributions just for this load. we can see that overhead line faults are the major cause of loss of supply for these customers. Let's now generate a tabular report of contributions again. This time, we'll just report contributions relating to this load. Faults on these elements contribute most to the average interruption frequency. It's not just the local faults, as we might expect, but also faults elsewhere in the same feeder because these will result in supply interruptions during the fault clearing and power restoration process. In the next video, we look at the optimal power restoration function in more detail and see how the trace feature can be used to see the sequences of power restoration events graphically.